Welcome to another how-to tutorial from Teachers First. Today we're going to learn how to modify an existing Simbaloo lesson plan. Today we are going to look at one of the ways to work with Simbaloo lesson plans. There are two ways. One is by copying one that's already been created and then adding modifications as you would like. The other is to start from scratch creating your own. Today we're going to take a look at saving one that's already been created and making changes that work for us. To do this, I've already logged in to my lesson plans at Symbaloo account and this is what shows up. This is my starting page and you will see up here at the top left the first link is to my lesson plans. Those are ones I've already saved. The next link, Marketplace, is where we're going to be working. So I'm going to click on the Marketplace and go there. The Marketplace is where anybody that has created a lesson plan and has published it, this is where you will find those. You can search by grade levels or on a subject and there's additional filters. You can also scroll down and kind of browse around at the highest rated, which is a really great place to start because these are ones teachers have used and like. Or you can also keep going to the most popular, which is another great place to look. And it's a really good place to look even if the subject isn't one you teach to get an idea of how game boards are laid out how different people use the lesson plan and game board to create lessons in different ways. If you want to see more than the first five shown here, you can just click on the show more link and it opens up and you get several other ideas. Each of these will have the title. The circle in the minute is an approximation about how long the creator estimates it would take to finish this lesson plan and then you'll see the rating. We're going to work with this one here, the fun with fractured fairy tales. So I've clicked on it and opened it up and this is the opening page which gives me a really good overview what this is about. So I've got the title and the author that wrote this has given us a website where we can go to get more information about this unit. You'll see the last updated date, approximate time again, how many steps, there's 18 steps, that means they've used 18 different tiles. You can put questions in different areas, this has six different questions. And when you create a, a lesson plan, you'll, you can add tags for classification. This one is writing K through five and language and literacy. You add objectives and students will see those learning objectives if you include them on there. You can add comments. And down here at the bottom left is the creator, the email to the creator of this lesson plan. This is fairly important because when we add it to our account, <clears throat> There's no way, and we start using it, there's really no way to give credit to the author other than if we deliberately put it in there. So it's a really good idea to thank the author and give them credit in some way or, or another. Perhaps add their email to a tile and thank them. Another way would be certainly to give this a rating and add a comment. And here's where I could post a comment if I wanted to, to thank the author and let them know that we enjoyed using this. But if I want to go ahead and make a copy so that I can start working with this lesson plan, I might want to look at it first and see what it looks like. So I can click on this Try Lesson. It opens in a new tab. And here is what it looks like. And you can see the lesson path path as I go down from the starting board. You'll notice that at certain places your, your players have a choice. They can go up or they can go to the right in this instance. I also can hover over a tile and you'll see what's included in there. And you can see here's the quick pop out where I could give a rating if I wanted to for this. You'll see the movie. I know this is a movie because I can see this movie icon right here. 
The paper clip tells me there's an attachment of some sort. And you can see here's the way to the finish line. So this one has a couple of different paths that the players can choose as they go along the way. So let's close this and get ready to start working with it. The first thing I want to do is add this to my account. And I just click there where it says add to my account. I get a check mark and there it is. It's in my account. So now if I go to my lesson plans, you'll see down here I have copy of fun with fractured fairy tales. And I'm ready to start working with this. I I have some options here. I have the pencil here to edit. The little bar gives me a couple more options where I can throw it away. I can preview and play it. But what I want to do is, is edit. So I click on the pencil and it gives me the main board, the one that we saw at the beginning when we were looking at the original. Here I can change the title. So when I share it with students, I don't want it to say copy of fun with fractured tales. I want to change it to fun with fractured ta fairy tales. Now I may not want to leave this information in about the whole unit for my students so I'm going to get rid of that and I'm going to say thank you I don't remember the email thank you Erin for creating this lesson. And I'm going to go ahead and leave the objectives in here I can add more or I can change them by clicking on the edit buttons or on the trash can if I want to get rid of it. If I want to add one, I just type in here. I can identify main characters in a fairy tale if I want to add. And I just click add objective and there it is. It's included. I can change the duration. There's a drop down and you can see there's different options. I'm going to leave it as it is for now. And I need to make sure to save my settings. That's important so that it all comes, comes along like I wanted it to. These are some of the tools you'll be working with and you'll see it's right below the title bar here. Here is where I can edit the lesson plan settings. That's where we just work. If I want to change the category, I can click here. The picture icon is kind of a fun one. You can change themes. And so when we started, when you saw this one, you noticed it had a blue background. And there's various themes here I can change and use to change the background. I can even use this plus sign and upload my own picture if I wanted to. And so I just saved something on my computer. One tip is you want to look at the size of these, especially when you're adding something later, because sometimes the icons are very big and they don't fit in very well. So take a look when you upload it. Take a look and make sure it works. For this one, I'm going to change it to this pink sparkly one because that goes really well with fairy tales. I'm going to save my theme. And this arrow here is the preview to, to look at it. You'll see already that right behind here is changed to this pinkish purplish instead of the blue. And if I want to take a look at what it looks like when I'm playing this, You'll see now my background has changed. So it's not the blue anymore. It's the pink and purple, but I have not changed my game board at all. Another thing you'll see here is the progress bar. See how far along we are in doing this lesson plan. But again, we're working with changes. Now, sometimes you will find things in these lesson plans that you definitely need to change for your individual use. For example, when I click on this one, this is a movie and I can see that and this is fine and I, I might want to leave it like it is. I may want to add an instruction but for right now I'm not going to. But as I move along I see that this person has set up a Padlet and that's a wonderful tool to include and that's one reason I really like this one because there's lots of different tools in here like the videos and the Padlet and questions. But if I keep this just like it is, 
my students are going to be adding to a Padlet that is not one I created and just for my students. So I want to create one that's just for my class. And the best way to do this is to go right into this tile that I have open and click on the edit bar. And this brings up all the information here that I can change. I want to still say that it's a Padlet, but I need to change the code to my Padlet that I've created. So I want to get rid of the code that's already in there. I'm going to go here to a Padlet I've already created, and I have my own question in there. I'm going to copy, click and copy this embed code, come back here, and I'm going to paste that embed code right into here. And as you can see, mine is much longer than what was there before, and that's okay. And I can add a question if I want, but I, also I really wanted to do was change the Padlet. So I'm going to save this. And now that it's saved, I'm going to click back on that tile. And you'll see now it goes to my Padlet that I created instead of the one that's there. So it's very important if you're copying a lesson plan, you need to go through link by link and look at these, uh, what they have in the tiles and make sure these are things that you can actually use in your classroom that you want to use. So this one is a Venn diagram. There's nothing in there. It has directions, but you just want to go through and double check the questions that you're happy with them. Number one, number two, are the answers correct? Because sometimes we make mistakes. So double check those, make sure those are in there. And you can go along and see more questions that we've created. I can, this tile here you'll see is blank. So maybe I want to add something to it. So I click the plus sign and here's my options. I can insert an instruction. I can insert a web page. I can search for a web page, videos, search for an article. I can look in my Symbaloo web mixes I've already created. So if you already have a Symbaloo account and you've saved web mixes, you can pull in something you've already saved from there, which is a great option. The embed code is what we use to insert the Padlet. I can attach a file. So maybe you have a PDF document of some kind or another you want to attach. Maybe it's an image you want to attach and ask a question. You can insert a math formula. You can even create a drawing or a graph. So you have many, many, many choices here along the way of different things that you can do with this. So I'm going to go ahead and add this tile here and it's going to be a, a quick check. So I'm going to call this a quick check and in the teacher instruction I'm just going to say answer the question below. Oops. And make sure you submit so it gets added. And I'm going to add a question and it's going to be a short answer. And it's going to be described in 10 words or less your favorite very fairy tail character and then the answer would go here and I'm going to say this and you can see I left this blank and it needs an answer so I'm just going to put in here that there will be multiple answers and I'll save and now you can see right here this tile now has, instead of looking the light blue here, now we've got the uh, hat here with the quick check, and it's been added within the path. Another thing I can do if I want to add even more information, I can edit. And if I scroll down, you'll see this arrow right now is just taking it down. If I wanted to add even more, I can put in another arrow and highlight that arrow and send it somewhere else. But for right now, I'm just going to save it and leave it how it is. There we go. Okay, 
so you can add more. Another little trick you can do is this little grid size change. It looks like a crop bar if you're used to working with pictures. You can change the grid size and you can right now, of course, we can't make it smaller because we've got tiles in there. But if I think I need to add more, I can add to the right or I can add to the left and you'll see the size change as I hover over it. So if I add to the right, you'll see now there are some blank tiles here in case I wanted to add that. And that's really all you need to do to change uh, already created lesson plan. The biggest tip I have for you is make sure you go through it very carefully to make sure everything that's already in there matches your objectives and if there's anything that is going to something similar to a Padlet or some other response form that it's collecting from multiple users, you might want to set it up just for your individual use with your students so that you get only their responses. And we hope you have fun creating your lesson plans with Symbaloo.